Hello friends and welcome to the Brothers in Dice channel. This week we got for you two brand new products from two of my favorite miniature companies. The first one is this. Joan of Arc, The Time of Legends. It is a new strategy battle game from Mythic Games, the authors of fantastic Mythic Battles Pantheon. This one is set in the Hundred Years' War. Uh, it's French versus English, even though there is a little mythological spin here. Um, the other armies included in this box and in other boxes, as you know, are uh, as is usual uh, in the Kickstarter these days, uh, you've got many boxes, is Holy and Unholy Army. So Angels versus Devil and his army. But anyway, this game is played with 15 uh, millimeter miniatures, so it looks really epic. Uh, the gameplay, from what I have seen so far, is great, very tactical, very engaging, and the miniatures also look good. Um, even though they are 15 mil, there is a ton of detail on them, um, and they look good. But there are literally hundreds of miniatures in this box. And I have three boxes like this. <laughs> so this is where the second product that I want to talk about comes into play. And that is, of course, the Citadel Contrast Paints. The whole internet has been uh, crazy uh, about these new paints. If you have been living under the rock and you don't know uh, what this is about, then this is basically a new set of inks uh, from GW. They are specially formulated so that they flow very well. They have very dense, very good pigments in them and uh, they flow well. Um, so they do not uh, tend to stain the flat surfaces too much. And basically what you are supposed to do with these is uh, to cover or to base coat your miniature uh, in a light base coat, uh, white or some off-white, and then just apply a single coat uh, of these contrast paints. And what they will do is that uh, they will settle in the recesses uh, where they will create the shades and uh, they will tint uh, the raised surfaces uh, in uh, the color uh, which you are using, basically allowing you to uh, paint the mini in a single coat. So no uh, painting, then washing, then highlighting, just single coat. This is definitely not for uh, like pro painting. If you want to do anything for the competition, you can use these paints, but you will probably use slightly different techniques. But I think that this is ideal for a mass battle game like this. The miniatures are small enough. Uh, they are articulated enough. So uh, my idea was that these paints will, would be ideal uh, and the technique that GW wants to use uh, these paints for would be ideal for a game like this. So I did some experimentation. I have painted a few minis, so I have two knights here. I have painted some archers. Uh, I will put on a detail in a bit. Some pikemen and some wolves. I'm really happy with the result. And what I'm going to do next is the paint all the minis needed for the first scenario from the scenario book. So about how many, maybe 50 minis. I've already uh, base coated them in the uh, Wraithbone uh, base, uh, base paint, which is um, again, new base spray from GW. And I will show you the process. Okay, so these are all the minis that I'm going to paint today. I have base coated them uh, using the Wraithbone spray, which is specifically formulated to work with the Citadel Contrast. I also have the 
red bone in a paint pot in case I make a mistake and I need to fix something. I'm using just uh, pot, pots from my medical supplies for as, as the paint handles. And you can see that the details on these minis are actually really good. Hang on. Even though they are 15 mil, they look pretty good. Incidentally, the larger minis from the uh, from the Joan of Arc uh, set are not as good, actually. Like uh, I think that the production quality went sadly a little bit down compared to the Mythic battles. But anyway, these are the minis. These are the new contrast paints. I have picked uh, 15 uh, of them, including the medium. And here I have the brushes that I'm going to use. I will be doing most of the work with this Army Painter brush, which is like size two. I have uh, size one and size zero Winsor & Newton Series 7 brushes, just in case I need to do any details, but I think that I will do 100% or 99% with the size 2 brush. And these are the experiments that I did uh, yesterday. I have painted some uh, wolves. Uh, the bases are covered with the baking soda, then painted with the one of these contrast paints, I think it is called Wildwood, and then slightly dry brush. Um, my original plan was to mm, do earth like this and then do a patchy uh, static grass like you can see on the archers there. But uh, it is actually the most time consuming process from the whole thing. I mean basing and finalizing these minis. This takes uh, a lot of time. So what I decided to do instead is that I will cover uh, the bases just wholly with the static grass. I will not care about putting the baking soda and uh, dry brushing and painting the bases before I put uh, the grass on them. Here are some knights. So these have all been done purely uh, with the contrast paints except for except for the metals and just as they advertise it it is really just a single single coat and I'm quite happy with the result I didn't bother um, like cleaning up the minis so you can see that there are still some mold lines stuff like that but Guys, there are hundreds of these and they are 15 mil. So I will batch paint these minis, meaning that I will go from the lightest paint uh, to the darkest uh, and um, do the same color on every mini. But for the sake of this video, I will just demonstrate how the contrast works on a single mini. Let's pick this mounted archer and let's work on this one. Okay, so I have picked these five paints to paint the mounted archer. I have black Templars black, apothecary white snake bite leather, military green and blood angels red. The only paint that we are going to mix for uh, this will be this gray color which I uh, mixed with uh, two parts of the apothecary white and one part of the uh, black and I will use that for the horse. This will be like a gray horse. And all I'm doing is a single, single coat. This will be probably the lightest color that I will use on the mini. That's why I am applying it first. Try to be neat. Um, the contrast 
paints are specific in in the in that that they that you shouldn't you cannot easily uh, repaint one contrast paint with the other and if you also try to work quickly because otherwise you will end up doing multiple layers which will darken the shade that you are using and we do not want that. I'm trying to be quick, but it's difficult with the camera in my face and knees at the same time. I'm not using wet palette for this, that's why I'm improvising with this kitchen plate as a palette. I usually paint using the wet palette, but um, these paints are not suited to be put on a wet palette, so I needed to come up with something different. As you can see, the paint nicely settles. I will actually use a darker for the tail. Since I have the black here on the palette, I will use that for the tail. And also for the mane. Is that how you say it in English? This part. And it flows in nicely. These are basically inks or washes. And I will also use the same paint for the hooves. I do not care about the base. I will cover it with the grass eventually anyway. So. It's sort of a spill here with the darker paint, so I'm trying to get rid of that so that I do not have to repaint it. What's next? Oh, we actually do need some ex some other paints for his face and for his um, jacket, the stuffed jacket. I will use the skeleton hoard for. I will not use this one anymore. And we will use this flesh paint. Okay, let's give them a good shake. Okay, let's start with the flesh. Now, the skeleton horde, we'll use this one for that jacket. There probably is a correct historic term in English for this, which I do not know. Oh, 
What is nice about the contrast paints is how nicely they go on the mini. Okay, let's do his pants and his hood with the military green. As you can see, I'm using the paint straight out of the pot. Next we will do the fabric on the horse and the shield using the blood rat. You can see how beautifully these uh, paints cover the white surface. This is not for a painting competition. Okay, next the leather parts using the snake bite leather. It's really, really difficult, guys, to, <laughs> to work around the camera. Okay, now I need to pick up the wooden parts like the bow with uh, wild wood. And I will use the same paint for his boots. Okay, good enough. All I need to do next is uh, to fix some of the places that I have missed. Oh, his hair. Uh, let's do his hair again with the wild wood. Whatever. Okay, so here is that horse archer again. I have fixed some of the biggest mistakes that I have made while painting on camera. Um, actually, I quite like the result. It is uh, not very impressive, but hey, these are really tiny minis and there are hundreds of them. I will not, I will not uh, spend 20 hours painting uh, each one of them. Uh, I have painted the metals using the uh, regular metallic paints. I have painted the base with the olive green. I will stick uh, some static grass on top of it. I have dropped the idea of uh, putting the uh, sandy texture using the baking soda and then um, putting grass on top. Instead, I will just cover all of the bases with the static grass. And here are the rest of the minis that I have painted. It actually took me like uh, maybe 12 hours spread across the uh, several days. And it is uh, like uh, 30, 
30 something minis, I think. So here is my palette that I have used. As you can see, I didn't uh, really mix the paints too much. Uh, the only paints that I have mixed was uh, the gray for some of the horses and uh, some of the gray hair. Uh, you have seen that. Uh, I have mixed uh, the flesh tone for some of the minis. Um, I used the, the medium for that and I added some pink to the uh, flesh color that I have. And then I uh, mixed the, the purple for this guy here. So the citizen has purple on him. And these are all of the paints that I have used. So if you want to replicate my process, these are the paints that I have used. Uh, I used every single one of these and I loved uh, most of them. Um, maybe the, the hardest one to work with is the, uh, the Dark Angels Green. It tends to leave streaks even on these small scale minis. Um, the medium I actually didn't use too much. So I was painting straight from the bottle. And I think that is the beauty uh, of these contrast paints. I didn't really find uh, the need uh, to use uh, the medium that much. The bases were painted with this uh, olive uh, refractor green from Vallejo. The, uh, the base coat in the bottle, uh, the red bone, I didn't use too much. I, when I made a mistake, I mostly rolled with it because I didn't want to come back to the minis. And these are the metallic paints that I have used for painting the metal parts. These are very good metallic paints. They are uh, supposed to be for the airbrush, but they flow very, very nicely, even from uh, a regular brush. So definitely recommend these. The, the consistency and uh, the behavior is actually very similar to the contrast paint. So I think that these go well together. What else? Um, oh, these are the only named characters uh, that, uh, well, the only named character is this guy. Uh, he's called Bertrand du uh, Geclan, I think. And you get these uh, transfer sheets. The motif on the shield is, uh, is a transfer. You get this cute sheet of transfer sheets as well. Unfortunately, there are not many illustrations on um, which design belongs on which mini. Um, and that is also like uh, my complaint about Joan of Arc. Com if, I, if I compare this to the uh, Mythic Battles Pantheon, uh, there is much less art, at least based on my initial impressions of this game. Yeah, so this is the uh, Bertrand uh, du uh, Geclan. So, final thoughts on the contrast paints. I love them. Recommend. Very nice paints. Um, I also compared them with uh, like regular artist inks. Um, I have a set of uh, FW inks for a very, very long time. I didn't use them before. Uh, with a paintbrush. Uh, I used them using an airbrush, but many years ago. So uh, I decided to compare them to the contrast inks. And um, I think it is this guy. Yeah, so I painted a hood. Oh, come on. I painted a hood on this guy and the leather straps on the horse also on this guy using, the, um, using these two inks. So the red hood is this uh, red uh, terracotta or red earth paint and uh, the straps on the horse is this burnt umber. Um, they do work very similar to the contrast paints, but I must say that I actually like the contrast paints better. They flow better, they cover better. 
but uh, it is quite possible that uh, it is because of the age of these inks and perhaps I have not uh, shaked them well enough <laughs> I haven't used these for I don't know how many maybe in 12 years 15 years something like that and my initial thoughts on Joan of Arc I do like the minis they are not a display quality they are tiny they are PVC you will find defects on them but um, the sculpts are cool um, the detail is actually very good uh, for this material and this size um, I'm getting more and more hyped uh, to play um, a game of Joan of Arc I now have enough minis painted for the first scenario um, and I will bring you my first impressions um, after I play it so watch out for uh, first impressions video on Joan of Arc um, in the meantime if you like mythic games if you like minis and you, if you like board games and painting minis perhaps you will enjoy some of the painting tutorials that we did for mythic battles pantheon and i am linking them here at the end of the video thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time bye bye